Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to introduce to you the controller in Angular. Now, a controller is going to allow you to essentially control your template and your data in a way that you didn't have access to without using JavaScript. So while this is our first time getting introduced to controllers, we're gonna start small and then we're gonna build you up to some best practices, including using a controller as syntax to make sure that your controllers are namespaced correctly. So let's get going on our first controller right now. So now that we're going to be getting into controllers and things like that, we're actually going to be getting into more of the JavaScript part of working in Angular, which is gonna be where you're spending almost all of your time, right? So the first thing we wanna do is, let's actually give our application some sort of a name. So we had this ng app directive before. What we can actually do is hit equals and then two quotes and then give our application some sort of name. So this can just be directory app like so. So uh, I'm just using uh, camel case here to say directory app. I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard so then when we actually need to use this, I have it available. And I'm gonna make a new file in here that's uh, just by right clicking saying new file. And this is just going to be directory.js. Now at the top of this directory.js, we're going to type angular.module and then we're going to have parentheses and then inside of quotes, the name of our application, uh, comma. Then we're going to have some empty brackets. Okay, now what we can do on the next line over, notice how we're not finishing this off with a semicolon because what this is going to be is it's going to be a method on this uh, angular.module. So we can say period and then type controller. I'm not gonna use this auto completion, uh, so we can type this out. Now we're gonna give our controller a name. So we can just call this directory controller. And then we can have a comma here and then a function. Now inside of this function, uh, in the argument, we're gonna be passing in a dollar sign scope like so. And now we're gonna obviously finish this out with some curly brackets here and end that all off with a semicolon. So now let's actually take some of our data out of our template here, where we have this ng init with a list. List is equal to uh, all these things. So we can uh, just cut that directly out of here. Okay, and let's paste it into our directory like so. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and say, instead of list, this is now going to be dollar sign scope dot list. Now there's a lot to learn about scope and controllers and all this. Uh, and in fact, in this particular example, we're just getting a controller up and running. However, in future videos, we're gonna show you a better syntax called the controller as syntax, where you don't end up uh, putting things onto the scope variable itself. But for now to get going, it's good to see exactly sort of what this does. Okay, so now we have an array with some objects in it. Uh, you can make this look a little bit nicer if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just so it's a little bit more readable. And we can save that. Okay, so now that we have this scope.list, how do we start to use this controller, right? So we have this JavaScript here, it's defining a, this list of people on the scope, um, and we're defining a controller named directory controller, but we're not really using anything yet. In fact, if you were to come to your page here, uh, you were to refresh, uh, you'd be getting a whole lot of problems because we deleted that ng init. So first thing we need to do is add the script. So just below our other script, we can say uh, script like so, and then the source is just going to be named directory.js. Okay, now again, once we get into some best practices in terms of uh, application, folder structure and stuff like that, this is going to change. However, for now, it's fine to just leave it in this home directory and declare it like so. Okay, so directory.js can refresh. I'm gonna open the console log here. And as you can see, we're not getting any JavaScript errors. So it means it looks like it's finding everything and we didn't make any typos. Okay, now let's head back to our template and before we did uh, ng-repeat 
item in list. And now what's cool is that this is going to work pretty much instantly the moment that we actually declare that we're using this controller. So on our body here, we can type ng controller and then pass in the controller's name, which is directory controller. Okay, I'm gonna give that some space there so you can see. So now that we're saying the controller of this content here is directory controller, it now has anything uh, access to anything on the scope variable, which is, if you remember, this list, because we have scope.list with the list items. Therefore, just simply using the list variable now becomes uh, an option for us. So if we save this, come back to our page, refresh, you can see just like we had before, our list is working just fine. In fact, if we search, everything works fine on that. It's still filtering based on the search bar. It's just checking list, which is this list right here. Okay, so that's your very most basic Angular controller. Now in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how the scope variable can be used just for more than plugging in data. We can actually use the scope variable to complete functions and things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create a form and we're gonna be able to add names directly to this list in action. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.